I'm the CEO of uh, XIV Services. So today I will speak about the Lean Information Modeling. I will present some uh, aspects of uh, how to uh, this hot topic nowadays. Uh, it's been presented in, around the world. So once again, thank you, Marius and Parametricos, for having us here. Uh, we're focusing on uh, beam leveling today. So yeah, Parametricos is reaching level three. I will explain later about the levels. So today we're going to speak uh, for some uh, uh, case studies that we have. Uh, the first one is uh, from a listed building and the second one is from um, a world monument. So our, com our company was established in 2014. We're main uh, BIM consultants and uh, we uh, provide uh, design performance uh, modeling analysis uh, on the process. Some certificates that we have. Uh, this is uh, the official name and the Greek name of uh, BIM, Building Information Modeling, for those who want to know. So the meaning of BIM is uh, uh, separated in three sec sections. It's model, the thing that's produced, uh, the modeling, how it, uh, the thing is produced, and the management, who, what, and when. So BIM, it's not just a 3D model, all right? It's all those things and more. And uh, it's actually a methodology, a way of manage the information from the built asset. It's very important to understand this. Using different applications, different methods, and connect them. Building information modeling separate in uh, some dimensions. So most of you, especially architects and engineers, know about the 3D. You have another four but uh, the question is why beam and why now so yeah we have to see that it's very important and that's uh, why we were discussing about beam business the global adoption and the global uh, goals and policies nowadays is based on these three topics climate social and economic the reason is that uh, we have a global movement on the real estate is rising Cities are growing fast, and the economic power uh, is shifting. Some of our uh, some of our cities are getting age, and uh, others are having a, a younger uh, population. Younger population, the resources are changing. That's very logical. So we have to discussion the new discussion for new businesses on new technologies, real estate assets, and big data. Parametrigos is one of those. And of course, BIM is part of this evolution. But uh, when did BIM start actually? It's a good question. BIM is not something new. It's something very old. It's something from the beginning. Um, all right. Um, we're speaking about the process that is actually uh, something important to understand. We manage uh, the capital expenses and uh, make it easy to handle on the operational expenditure of, of a build asset. It's very important to understand this. This is the process of uh, a build asset by starting uh, the first initial programming meeting with the client and deliver it to the whole life cycle. Uh, this is the meaning of uh, using the BIM process, the blue line from the traditional way of doing the studies on the uh, AEC field. And uh, when we can see, um, where we can see the benefits from uh, BIM is by eliminating those mistakes. Okay, some of you have already seen a lot of them around the world. So the question is how we measure the BIM implementation as a company, as a country, or as a community. To evaluate this, um, we, uh, all, the most of the countries agreed on some uh, maturity levels. Uh, those levels are explained in, nowadays in four levels. It's uh, level zero up to level three. 
as you can see, it's paper-based process, and we're going to, I need to create a web service. That's why I was saying before that Parametrigos is reaching level three. Okay. Uh, the list on the left side are countries that already implement the process and trying to make the best. And the future discussions are focusing uh, what are the next levels, three, four, five, etc. This is a good graphic so you can understand what are the, uh, the discussions for the future. Europe released uh, on 2017 uh, this document that uh, they're expecting that uh, 2025 they're going to have those benefits and the, those numbers, but uh, very optimistic from my side. This is a statement from um, a construction company US. You see the numbers by implementing building information modeling. And the numbers coming from those numbers. Why you, we measure the financial aspects. Because the process of BIM is based on controlling and managing the information of the asset. In Cyprus, we have done those steps. In 2017, uh, Cyprus BIM task group established. Very, very uh, first steps. We build the main framework. We launch our website, but it's empty for now. So, yeah. But uh, last but not least, Cyprus is one of the biggest countries in uh, the leading countries in digital uh, transformation of cultural heritage BIM. I will show you an example on that, on the case studies. Uh, in order to achieve BIM and implement it on your process, those are the three main pillars. And there are six steps. Start from the ground floor, assemble your team, prepare your equipment, use a pilot project, document everything, I mean everything, and use consultants and experts in order to achieve the best values. Remember, BIM is for everything. So um, I will enter the case studies. As I told you before, the first one is uh, from a listed building here in Cyprus that have already implemented BIM level one. And uh, the second one is a uh, heritage bin process on a war monument, again, here in Cyprus. The first project was, uh, is, is still on, uh, on process, it's not, demol it's not uh, developed, but as you can see, it's a small one project that's uh, almost 200 square meters. Uh, we have already uh, prepared 94 uh, A1 paper sheets from the drawings and uh, more than 43 uh, 40 3D views and uh, renders. The equipment I have used and the softwares, I have a video, so I will try if that video will play. No, okay. Exactly what we have done here is that um, we use drones to fly around the property, photograph the property, and use that information from the images to prepare the 3D model. It took us only one hour on site and one hour in the office to prepare the model. Uh, this is, um, again, another one video, but I think it's gonna go, not going to play, but it's um, the processing of uh, creating a point cloud model that we use as a reference in order to create the as-built model. And those are the first drawings. I will repeat, we didn't measure anything on site. We just took photographs. And the quality, we were able to uh, make all the small uh, points that uh, have interest, interest sorry. So this is a 3D view of the existing site. Some drawings, sections, details, again, 3D model, as you can see the, the detail of the doors. We create also the structural analysis model with all the components 
of the building. We create solar analysis. We were able to make the quantities from that model. And this other one in video is actually an automated process. Just one click and you have all the elements calculated from the model. Uh, all of the building elements that uh, was designed in the new model has all the information inside, the structural information, so it, could, it can be measured. Those are the details. And uh, let's enter to the second uh, case study. Um, I don't know if you know the church of Asinu. It's an UNESCO heritage monument. So with the same process, we capture the reality by using drones. This is uh, the result from the photogrammetry. By using the images, you can see the texture, how important is having that information. The interior frescoes of the church. We have already captured that. And that's the quality of the frescoes. We were able to see even the thickness and the different shapes on the surface. This is the beam model from the church, ready to be used and reused. This is the 3D view environment from our PC. You can see the 3D model inside the point cloud model with all the uh, frescoes and the exterior uh, information. So for the first time, uh, we have an accuracy on the 3D model. Uh, we have floor plans, so in case of a disaster, the monument can be built again as it was. It's very important. 3D views to understand the process. It's uh, 3D sections. We actually took each element of the church and we add parameters inside. By adding parameters on the model, you're able to have more information and more information is better quality for examination. And we took that church in uh, an even more steps. Remember that all the processes we are speaking for all in one model. We don't use different models, it's only one model. So. We took the HB model and uh, make tests on the AR VR engines available, HTML on the web, uh, different conversions from the 3D game engines and uh, controlling the data. We tested 60 commercial platforms available on that base. HTML conversion. And um, yeah, once again, sorry for not playing, but uh, on that video, it's very important to see it. We had used the church by scanning the priest and using the Microsoft HoloLenses and controlling the church and the, the priest actually speaking to us as we were visiting the church. Without having a, church, without having a priest, we were able to um, be there and listen to the story. Uh, hopefully, I will try to find the videos. It's important to see it. So, thank you for the presentation. So, thank you, Simos, again. We do, I personally have a couple of questions, but we can give to anyone that has to ask them now. If anyone is interested, sure, that's enough. Mm -hmm. So, the pictures of the church were amazing. Up to that point, no manual work has been done, or how much work has uh, had been done when you created that model of the church that you showed the inside? Uh, yeah, yeah. Apart from the digitalization, the automatic digitalization. Okay, we just we just use uh, uh, photogrammetry by capturing images and three uh, D laser scan process with the ZNF company, a German company that uh, provide laser scan. So we, we took the data from capturing the material and that's it. Just capture the reality. 